Now, there's a reason why Jesus came as a baby and was born under the law, who was required as the new Adam to keep every jot and tittle of the law perfectly, to qualify as the crucified Savior, he had to be the lamb without blemish, by which he achieved his positive righteousness. We speak of his perfect act of obedience. You see, he didn't just die for us. He lived for us. He didn't just take our punishment. He achieved our reward. And so our, what happens in our justification is that there's a double imputation. My guilt is transferred to Jesus. His righteousness in the sight of God is transferred to me. It doesn't get any better than that. If I thought that I had to wait until I was inherently righteous to get into my father's house, I would sleep in tomorrow morning. There is no gospel in that at all. That is horrific news to me. The good news is not from the law, but from the gospel, that all that is necessary for me to be reconciled with the Father is to put my trust in the Son and in the Son alone. So that our justification, when we say justification is by faith alone, you have to be careful there. Even that is shorthand. All that really means in the final analysis is justification by Christ alone. Faith is merely the instrument by which we lay hold of Christ, are united to Him, and receive the benefits of His perfect obedience and His atoning death. Our justification we could say, and I'll probably confuse everybody, on the other hand, it would still be true to say that the only way you can ever be justified in the sight of God is by works. You say, wait a minute, you just spent this whole time telling us that we're justified by faith, now you say we're justified. Yes, we are justified by works, but the question is, whose work? Not mine, not yours, but by His work. So justification by faith alone means justification by faith in the work of Christ alone. This defines the gospel, dear friends. If there's anything completely lost and muddled in the Christian culture today, it's the question of what is the gospel? If you go out and ask people in the church, what is the gospel? I've had ministers in their doctor of ministry program, and I give them this question, write down on a piece of paper, what is the gospel? They say, they've been ordained to the gospel ministry. I say, good, what's the gospel? And they look at me like, well, don't you know it? Yeah, I say, I do know it. I want to find out if you know it. And I'll get answers like this. The good news is we can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, that is good news. It's not the gospel, but it's good news. Or that you can have purpose driving your life. That may be good news, but it's not the gospel. Or you may hear the news that God loves you unconditionally, which is false. It's not the gospel. The gospel is a specific message about Jesus and what he's accomplished for us and how the benefits of his life and death are appropriated to us by faith. It's faith alone. 
It's not grace plus merit. It is grace alone. And it is not me plus Jesus. It's by Christ alone. That is fantastic news. Just like Abraham, when God said, come out and look at the stars, and Abraham believed God, and God counted him righteous when he was not righteous. That's what imputation is. And this is what's under attack right now in the reform world, in the evangelical world, the whole idea of imputation. Take away imputation, you take away sola fide. Take away sola fide, you take away the gospel. I don't believe that Luther was exaggerating when he said this doctrine is the article upon which the church stands or falls. Luther didn't just tip his hat to that as a doctrinal truism. He understood that it was life itself, and he was not going to give up that gospel for any king, any prince, any elector, any emperor, any priest, any bishop, or any pope. Unless I'm convinced by sacred scripture or by evident reason. I cannot recant because my conscience is held captive by the word of God and to act against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. As Luther, when he read of the righteousness of God in Romans in an essay by Augustine, and God took the shackles from his eyes, and for the first time he understood the gospel. He said, I saw the doors of paradise swinging open, and I walked through. And once a man knows that he's justified by faith alone and has tasted of the sweetness of the gospel, will never, ever, 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 ever negotiate it. Because this is the article upon which you stand or fall. And it's the article upon which I stand or fall. God grant them these perilous times our church will stand and not fall over itself looking for the power of God everywhere else except where he has placed it in his gospel of his son. Let's pray. Forbid, O Lord, that we would think for a moment that we were justified by the doctrine of justification. But that the doctrine of justification would teach us how we are justified by our faith in Christ and in Christ alone. O oh Lord God, in these ages and times of conflict where men want to hear everything but the gospel, who have no sense of their need for the gospel because they have no understanding of your law, we ask that you would open the eyes of your people in this day to a full understanding of the truth, the sweetness, the excellence, and the urgency of your gospel by which we stand or fall.
Amen.